everybody. I'm Jody Vance. And I'm George Affleck. And it's time for... Are you ready to rumble? Lonsman. Drop it like it's hot. Drop, drop it like it's a writ. <laughs> Looks like we're having an election on uh, September 20th. I think we'll find out probably after this, before the next show that we produce here. Uh, we're back after a little break, but uh, looks like we're going to have an election. No surprise. Interesting. Oh, uh, you know, it's funny to me how word gets out. Uh, and then multiple news sources report it. This is this is the spin, right? It's like, ooh, we hear, we hear, we hear, we hear. It's coming Sunday, coming Sunday, coming. Why don't they just drop it? Why don't they just drop it? <laughs> I'm sure there's some kind of math behind it. There is math behind it, obviously. They want it on a certain day. You drop it on a certain day. You make it happen on a certain. But it's just, it's so, it's a thing. Here we go. The speculation beginning. I've heard, um, I heard uh, Jagmeet Singh. Uh, federal NDP leader uh, this morning on radio. I heard uh, mm-hmm. uh, conservative leader Aaron O'Toole uh, mm-hmm. on this morning. Like the 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 discussions about, and it's so interesting to me, George. It's so reminiscent of almost exactly the mm-hmm. same. Like what? Last year? Yeah. Provincial. Yeah, it's exact yeah. same. I it's mean, wild. It's, it's so, but I don't think the outrage or frustration will be, uh, you know. As high across the country. I think people are pretty happy with Trudeau right now. That's why he's got to do it. But, yeah. uh, and you know, the difference with that, the provincial election was it was a, we had a, a structured four year terms that yeah. uh, the, the BC Liberals brought in that uh, some people hate, some people like, but uh, it made it more predictable. Um, the challenge with fixed terms is it creates an election campaign one year out nonstop and the money starts flowing and blah, blah, blah. With the non, not knowing when the writ will drop, uh, like federally, um, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, and so, in fact, sometimes being unpredictable can save taxpayers money, I think. Hmm. I like you that. Don't have this sort of ongoing one year campaign. You're sort of either always in election mode or you just kind of, when the rip drops, it's go time and you can always expect it to drop in four, year four, year five. But now we're in year, what are we in year? Year three, two, two and a half? Two and a bit. What was it? Two, two, two and a bit. Yeah. So, uh, that's pretty early. That's it pretty is early. pretty early, but yet, um, you know, when you when you do the math on, uh, as was likely the case here, if you pulled back the curtain, uh, provincially yep. speaking, and in it was Saskatchewan, right, that also held mm-hmm. an election uh, in a, right. in a pretty deep part of the pandemic. I mean, that was, a, yep. uh, but elections BC said, you know, we can hold a safe election. Elections Canada for likely, you know have a, a similar perspective on this. And certainly people are out and moving around and feeling yeah, we confident. we have vaccines. We have this vaccines year, now. Last time last year, we had no vaccines. We didn't know what the future held. No. I think it was much more risky for the NDP to do that last year. And in fact, because they couldn't predict the future, they were they probably would have done, I think we've talked about this before, just as well this year if they'd waited. But they didn't yeah. know if it, how well things would go. Uh, but I think they probably could have lasted another year and pulled off another majority. Um, because you still would have had Wilkins in as the leader of the BC Liberals, unless he'd been pushed out for some reason. Um, so, you know, you would have been at probably the same results one year later. So, well, and as a result, certainly... we got a lot of uh, push. We had a lot more uh, people got sick, sicker in the fall. Yeah. And so, you, you know, it's a direct correlation to the campaign and, and, and uh, the numbers that suddenly went up in, in November. Yeah, that was a scary time. It just mm-hmm. was. It just was. There's no changing what happened. But, uh, you know, in hindsight, mm-hmm. it's like, oof. Uh, let's talk about vaccines uh, on a couple of fronts. And yeah. while talking about, you know, the the now looming, allegedly looming federal election, let's say September 20th. At this moment uh, in time. At this yeah. moment in time. But, you, you know. Although when you're listening, you might be saying, well, there's a federal election. What are you talking about? It's been exactly. called. Exactly. So, you might be listening. Know that like, we preach this. As of taping time here on Unspun Podcast. Um, but the. Now we're going to see, as you and I have discussed many times on municipal, provincial or federal platforms, it is Mm -hmm. in that window that you start to get the promises, right? Or the big moves that have been hinted at leading up to. So, but I mean, there are a lot of Canadians, the majority of Canadians wanting Mm -hmm. vaccine passports to travel. Let's go. Let's, Let's figure this out. Uh, I know I've got two two trips booked, one in October and one in uh, December, one for the U.S., one for U.K. So uh, they've been booked for a while. And right now, U.K. is you can't go there. 
uh, I think that's more political than anything else. But um, we can go to the U.S. So without a problem currently all the time. We could have flown to the U.S. Um, so the passport thing, I'm yeah, bringing on. Totally. I, you know, if anybody's ever traveled, we've heard this before, to any country where they have malaria or whatever. You Typhoid, have to get your cholera. Shots and you have to prove that you had your shots. This is not unusual. So now if you want to go to a country that says you got to have your vaccines, then that's the rule. You that's know, when I talked to Shane Woodford in Denmark, you you lived in Denmark. I've got did, family yeah. in Denmark. My um, grandmother was uh, born in Denmark, born in Copenhagen. Yep. So, go, you know, the, the Danish sort of mentality, I had Shane Woodford on radio with me to talk through what his day-to-day -day life is like there because he's active on Twitter. He's formerly of Radio NL, former colleague at CKW, mm -hmm. uh, now a freelance journalist out of Denmark. And it was fascinating for to hear how his reality is um, so different than here. Uh, first of all, with testing, he goes, Jody, there's testing sites in every yeah. neighborhood. The data he's, is, you know, what ad test. you know, the address of the people who have tested positive because yeah. it, it's his, it, it keeps the freedom. And here, can you imagine? Can you imagine the pushback from people? Oh, I mean, Denmark takes, the, take, Denmark takes the word social and social democracy to the max. For Next sure. level. But this is the yeah. interesting bit. He said, I have two vaccine passports. He goes, I have the QR code that allows yeah. me to travel through the EU. That is, you know, all in one and one for all. I show that QR code. It says mm -hmm. when I was vaccinated, uh, what vaccine I received, you know, if I ever tested positive, boom, it's all in that little burp on there. And he goes, and then I also have a local one that mm -hmm. allows me to do the things uh, that proves when my last negative test was and that I've been vaccinated. And it's provided by the government. It's all paid for by the, by the government. He's like, you, because I said, how I does that work? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, it's and expensive. He's, he, he's been hypercritical of uh, Dr. Henry uh, yeah. here. He thinks we didn't go far enough, uh, that uh, we were weak on the, uh, on the testing side and, and we could have been more stringent on the, you know, locking things up and yeah. I don't know. He said I, COVID I, I, zero, it, it's, it would be great, but we're just not willing to give up as much as well, look needed what's there. Happening in Australia. I mean, it's there, yeah. they, they went for COVID zero and now they're locked down, locked down, locked down. They keep, yeah. they, cause they didn't order enough vaccines apparently. Right. Which they don't get. Um, but you know, I, th I think it's, yeah. So I think they're the traveling passport, but I still, I think the indications from certainly federally and provincially is that this localized passport, mandated by government or issued by government it's not going to happen you, there's an event happening in victoria uh a brewery there is doing it um they're they're saying you know you have to show your proof of vaccinations um because they're holding concerts all, they're holding a yeah, couple of concerts, concerts and they decided you know what if everybody's gonna be if we're allowed to have everybody up and dancing um we want that we want that fun back in our lives but we can't do that uh, with unvaccinated people in the crowd so we are going to require proof of vaccination for these events period and guess what? Ticket sales going just fine. Just fine. Because 85% oh. of British Columbians have had their first dose. 71% have had dose two. We're going to get to 85 of two doses. And when you're, and I predict, George, I think the Canucks are going to say you have to be vaccinated to come here. I think that the BC Lions will say it. I think I, and none of, this, I, I, none of yeah. this has happened, but this is my prediction. I think the big players are going to say, you know what? The very vocal hyper minority, like the tiniest slice mm -hmm. of the unvaccinated who are that won't get vaccinated. Or and you know, there's a piece reason. of that. There are people who can't be vaccinated, and there should yeah. be there should be um, uh, things done to ensure that that those people are not ostracized or left out. There's ways of making that uh, yeah, medical yeah. exemption. If you're allergic to this, I know a couple of people who literally cannot get vaccinated, and they are so upset that they can't. That is a different category than the person that's like, yeah, they, don't not get to, sure. they don't want to go into a crowd of 5,000 people. But if they know that everybody's vaccinated and they're not just doing this as a protest uh, to not be vaccinated, then yeah. they know they're safer. I mean, there are kids with heart transplants that you and I both know yes. uh, that will never be able to potentially get vaccinated. I don't know what the rules are and all those things, but vaccinations are not a simple thing. But uh, that is a small slice of the, of the 10 to 15 percent that won't get vaccinated. So, you know, getting to 100% is never going to happen. No. And 85% is the perceived or uh, estimated immunity level, herd immunity, whatever we call it, to get because of the community Delta immunity, Delta. I think is yeah. uh, the preferred term now over preferred herd term, immunity, yes. community herd. immunity, because community spread is what is going to impact our schools. Community spread is the difference between uh, it being dangerous for kids who are not yet 
able to be vaccinated, those under the age of 12. And I want to talk about that a little bit because there's so yeah. much calling from the hilltops for mandates, not just with vaccines, but also with masks, masks in school. And it's so funny because mm -hmm. I get a lot of at me because I'm open to the discussion and I'm very supportive of the school. You uh, love masks. I, well, I, I like masks for me. Yes. I Can do. I tell you, I was up in Chilliwack. I was up in Chilliwack on the weekend and uh, it was weird because I was up there for an old friend and we stayed the night and you know, we what were all weird? Our double facts. Well, we came home and made a stop on the way to get a Starbucks. And then we stopped at uh, this mall to, you know, at the, at the Walmart in Abbotsford. And the only people in both Chilliwack and Abbotsford that we saw wearing masks were employees. They were all the employees who were wearing them at London Drugs and Walmart. I, I, I can't think of, I couldn't count on one hand, and that includes Amanda, <laughs> uh, wearing masks. There weren't. Wow. Nobody was wearing them. And it felt, and, and I didn't wear mine because I'm like, all right. Because uh, you don't it, like it, masks. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a fan, but I don't. I also I believe in them, but I think oh, I mean, I'm joking. I'm joking because you, know, no, you yeah, said yeah, yeah. you love masks. I love <laughs> masks because it but keeps it me weird. anonymous I until I talk. I felt, I, I felt naked, and then I go to this gym, and I was working. And, and this week, I went. I hadn't been there in a few couple of weeks, and I, it's been a very strict mask mandate, very strict cordoned off areas. Got there today or a Monday, and I, I walk in and like no masks, no cordoned off areas, mm. back to normal. Treadmills back, everything's back, and I'm like, is this? allowed and the guy who owns the place super strict he's like he has been super super strict because he doesn't want to get shut down he said right. yep we're good i'm like and so i said okay and i pulled my mask off i guess i'll because it's really not fun working out with the no. with the mask on no. and uh you know i'm double vaxxed uh this i was easily six feet away from everybody else and there was trainers there but it, it was i felt naked i did i yeah. felt really naked and and it was weird and so i could see how people and i, I was never you know i'm i mean you and i we're, you're much more strict than I am, but I'm not. I'm not completely like in my anti mask. I'm not like I'm always being kind of a little bit more flexible. Or I just, right. I want, I'm not going to go to those stores if I have to wear a mask. I'm going to be bothered. Right. But I wear a mask, and I have been wearing a mask. But I took me, you know, I was one of the later adopters of masks, uh, and now take them off though. It feels weird. It does feel weird. It does feel weird. For me, it was sort of baked in because so early on, being dad's essential. Yeah, I was yeah, mask and specific. shield. Yeah. So for me, I was I was full smock gloves, mask, and shield to see my dad, okay? So when I was asked to wear a mask to go into yeah. the grocery store, I'm like, okay, right? That's, that's nothing. It, it, felt, it felt less or so for me and for my kid. And I think uh, we talked about this. Both of our kids are around the same age, if not exactly the same age. Um, it, it was never a conversation with him. He's like, yeah, I, you know, school gave us these masks. We wear them all the time because it's easier to just leave them on than it is to take them off and put them on and I'll forget them, I'll drop them or whatever. We got into a routine of cleaning them on the regular. I thought we'd use disposable masks all the time. Turns out we don't. And mm -hmm. he just wears them. Our, just, we have our little mask bowl of clean ones and then mask bowl of dirty ones. Right. And then, you know, wash them it's every not day. that hard. But people who are like, it has to be a mandate. Dr. Henry has said a thousand times over that mandates don't work. And what really needs to happen is people just need to do it. And that's what the, about the fact. OK, so, you know, I, I am and this is the, and we talk a lot about this, about the numbers. So we got these crazy case counts were like two or three times more than Ontario. Uh, are we usually ahead of Ontario on these numbers in general over the, throat, the pandemic? I think we are. But we they were going crazy a few months ago. Now we're at what, 450 cases, something like that yesterday? 534, 500. I think, was yesterday. So, and you know, and just... the majority of them, yes, are in the central Okanagan. But you know what I noticed yesterday in going through the numbers? They're going up everywhere. But the most important part is going through the numbers and they're going up everywhere. Hospitalizations are not sp spiking along with the cases. They, so what should we do? Oh, oh, can okay. I just say one more thing? Yeah. And one person died, sadly, yeah. one person died in, in that 24-hour period with the 500, I think it was 584, actually, if memory mm -hmm. serves. Don't check me on that, but it's around there. But half and, the yeah. cases were in the central Okanagan. But there were still 100 in Fraser Health, and 100 sounds low when you look at the population of Fraser Health. I think it was 40 in Vancouver. Or there was, Vancouver. it actually, it was actually went over 100. It was 105 at yesterday's okay. numbers. So things are going up, but it's one of those things where it's like a case is no longer uh, severe illness, hospitalization, or death risk like it was six months ago. And I think mm -hmm. that's a really important part of this when we're so keyed in on the daily case numbers. We really have to go to the how it's impacting our health care. Yeah. And yeah. also, yeah. What, what, is the, what is the illness 
you know, trajectory for the people that do test positive. Because in talking with Shane Woodford, again, I'm dropping his name like it's hot here. I'm going to have to send him this. You better be listening. Well, get, be oh, listening. I'll send it to him and tell and him he has Denmark to listen. listen to but he's like, yeah. let me tell you, Denmark had done 100,000 tests in the same span that BC had done 6,000 tests. He was, let me tell you, if he did 100,000 tests, there'd be 10 times more cases. I mean, we're only really testing symptomatic and what does that tell cases. You? So right? what? How many people in the hospital? That's the that, only exactly. how many people are dying. Yes. I don't I don't understand his obsession with the, the counting. I never understood it. I, I know that some people are. I, I don't I, I think the focus needs to be on uh, the hospitalizations and deaths and why people are dying. And yeah. the salute the solution for that, as we know, was to uh, you know, get vaccines. <laughs> and we're there. We're getting so, there. That's the key. This is our shot.ca. Have you heard about this? You know, I got the t-shirt. Yeah, that was a while ago. Was it Everybody, back? yeah, it was, it's a thing. It's like this grassroots movement. It was actually Haley Wickenheiser, Hockey Hall of mm-hmm. Famer, Haley Wickenheiser, reached out to me and said, yep. will you be a part of this? And I was like, yes, Haley Wickenheiser, I will be a part of whatever you're doing. She's a doctor now. As if being a, an Olympian, a, a gold medalist, a Hockey Hall of Famer wasn't enough. She's now actually a physician. Wow. It's, she's unbelievable. Anyway, so she's part of this grassroots team of volunteer doctors who yeah. started This Is Our Shot.ca, which was a, a situ- it was set up uh, as town hall meetings, virtual town hall meetings for people who were really mm-hmm. hesitant about vaccines, who were maybe going down the rabbit hole of misinformation and disinformation or being targeted by anti-vaxxers or what have you. And mm-hmm. these physicians have been patient, available open, honest, data-driven. It's been just great to be a part of that initiative. And then Mm -hmm. they just launched yesterday a new arm, uh, because you know here in Canada, we have not been, or here in BC in particular, we have not been doing the, hey, you can win some Mariners tickets if you get vaccinated. We have not done that from a government perspective. Don't want to go down that road. Do not go down that road. Unless Mm -hmm. it's a volunteer situation, which is what, this is our shot. They've started rewards for change. So this isn't about getting people vaccinated so they win something. It's if you've been vaccinated, a single dose, double dose, you can enter here as well, simply by posting about your experiencing tagging reward for rewards, rewards for change, or this is our shot.ca. And then sharing that experience might help someone. I helped someone yesterday. They, uh, a friend's daughter, adult daughter, um, I won't say her name because it was in confidence, but she she reached out on my Instagram DM and and, and shared with me that she was finally going to get her first dose. She was Mm -hmm. very hesitant, not an anti-vax, hesitant about putting anything in her body. She's the type of person that would not go under general anesthetic if she could avoid it. She would literally stay awake for surgery if she could avoid putting anything in her body. That is just, it, it gives her anxiety. And so I said, A, super, super glad. She goes, I don't know why I'm reaching out to you, but I am. And I said, I'm super proud of you for saying it out loud. I'm super excited that you're going. Here's my experience. I, when I had it, I didn't have any side effects. I didn't even feel the needle. I was super relieved after it. And you remember, George, it was January when I got my first shot. I was guilty. I felt guilty about getting it. Yeah. And I also didn't have any frame of reference, right? Nobody around me had had it. So I thought, what's yeah. this going to be like? So we had that. And then she got back to me yesterday afternoon and she just wrote, I did it. And I said, how do you feel? And she goes, I've stopped crying because I was so scared (laughs) and now I feel better. And it's like, okay, well, that's a story, right? Mm -hmm. And she's going to feel better in 14 days. And in 28 days, she's going to get her next dose. And 14 days out from that, she's going to feel way less anxious about COVID-19. And that's sort of what rewards yeah. for change is all about. So that's why I tell that story. That's, yeah. My reward is, uh, even though I got the AZ uh, and the, the Indian version, which apparently is not as good as the English version, I'm like, uh, I don't care because uh, it doesn't matter. Because, you know, my reward is I probably won't die of this. So probably won't good, die. That's a good reward for me. But you have uh, a- it's good to get more people. It's good to get more. You, you do have a risk. Mm-hmm. If you go into Stanley Park, you have a risk of being injured by something other than COVID-19. Oh, werewolves? No, not werewolves. Coyotes, they're back. They're, they're, they attacked again last night. Five-year-old kid, five, kid. Five-year-old. Visiting this from Alberta. Like, well, and I heard a debate this morning with uh, on Mike Smith's show, which I was filling in for two weeks. And uh, thank you for letting me f- not fill in for anymore. That was, I appreciate Mike every, every day I did that. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a hard job for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, he had Bill Thielman on and somebody from the uh, Fur Bears. I think you've, yeah. you've interviewed her. And it was a debate. And, and, and Bill's a opinion was get rid of them all they're not native to this you know to get them out you know they're not 
get rid of them, uh, call them completely. And that was interesting because, you know, it's aggressive. Uh, but at some point, politically, I think that's what people are going to start asking for, because this is getting ridiculous. I mean, I think that uh, at what point do we sort of go, uh, you know, so we can't go to Stanley Park because of fires and now, and now coyotes um, and they're attacking children. Uh, and you can talk about trying to find ways to, you know, stop feeding them and getting people to change the way they treat them. But maybe we shouldn't have coyotes in Stanley Park. And I think most people are surprised there are so many of them and they aren't indigenous to Stanley Park. Yeah. Uh, but the, re the so representative from Fur Bearers, I can't remember her first name. I want to say it's Erica Fox. Sorry if I got your name wrong. She's a great guest. Um, and she vehemently uh, disagrees with Bill Thielman on the subject mm -hmm. of euthanizing as many as you possibly can, because her point is they're going to come from across the street. Like you can't get rid of every coyote in all of the lower mainland. When people say they're not indigenous to this part of the world, they have been here for a long time. I see coyotes walking up and down our streets here in Kitsilano in the early morning hours well, when I was Bill's working at breakfast. Was, uh, they haven't been here that long, but I don't know. I don't, you know, there's, here's where science should really push the agenda and let the experts tell us what we should do. But at this what, point, the experts... I agree. You know, Conservation the, officers, because yeah. our, our, our parks yeah. should be safe. Um, I would argue that there should be proper trash uh, containers in Stanley Park, which they're not. Wait, are you asking the park board to do something? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Wrong department. In fact, even ask the city to do something. How about that? Oh, wait. Oh, but wait, at least it'll go through a new filter, won't it? With the new auditor general in the city of Vancouver? Uh, well, not the park board, but the city has a new auditor general, which, which was kind of a, that was a big deal at the time. And and, uh, and I saw the press release that came out and every single counselor was quoted in the press release. Yeah. Uh, Colleen uh, Hardwick was the one that really pushed hard for this. Uh, I, I talked about it when I was there. Um, it could also be a nightmare for <laughs> a bu a bureaucracy potentially. Uh, but it's funny. I think Colleen must be away because uh, there was no kind of press conference. There was no kind of, you know, her. Really, she pushed it out a little bit on Twitter, but I think they might have timed that on purpose. To, to While lower. she was on vacation, yeah, Aww. to make sure she didn't she didn't get uh, the the glory that she probably you know deserved. For Can we talk quickly? Hard on this. Timing wise, we're short, so we're hopefully an auditor general in the city of Vancouver is going to yep. bring some much needed transparency and, and some much needed Bum. prioritization of the budget that you and I have been calling for for 133 episodes of Unspun Podcast. I really <laughs> hope it actually does something because it's costing yep. us to hire somebody to do this. So I would like that city officials would be able to do this without having to hire somebody to watch this and, and do the math on it. But mm -hmm. here we are. Um, your neighborhood, George. Uh, Yale Town, uh, just up the road from you, Granville Entertainment District, a place that I have said I have not felt safe for years. Now we're being warned by Vancouver police about an uptick in sexual assaults in and around that yeah, area. And, what? And, you know, Amanda Amanda brought this to my attention and uh, yesterday, and so I tweeted it out, and it's got a lot of pickup, uh, a lot of interest, uh, and then some people... Amanda got into a bit of a battle and she blocked this guy because she's like, you know, so because the, the, the numbers are, are shocking because it's gone up double what it was two years ago. And that makes no sense because, you know, we had a pan we've got to be in a pandemic. So there's nobody on Granville Street. So you can't even say it's because of the nightclubbing and the partying. There's something else going on and it's not good. And in fact, there was a, I heard yesterday from a neighbor that a woman had been attacked across in the alley of our, of our right behind our building in Yale town. Oh, this kind of stuff uh, never used to happen. And then you hear about the, da you know, then there was somebody tweeted out to me about gas town, uh, that, uh, and it, this was from the network hub, which is a co-op kind of office space in, uh, on the Hastings. I think, I think they are, uh, I think so. right in the right in the heart of the downtown East side there, um, saying that several women owned businesses with women employees have decided to close down, in that area because they couldn't take the harassment uh and the and the, especially on the sexual harassment and the fear for their safety uh and i'm just looking going hello what you know and nobody I'm came to this their is a policing thing i don't want to yeah. get into more no. police less police this is something else going on this is about development this is about design this is about you know a whole bunch of things that are not being taken care of by this council and no. it's neglect. It's neglect. And I think the only people that should be responsible for this uh, is city council. And I have not seen a peep from them. Uh, they finished up about two weeks ago and they've gone dark. Uh, you know what? You work 365 days for us. Uh, you know, they don't get time off. And I want to hear from this council uh, on this issue. This is not 
appropriate that we're seeing this kind of level of uh, increase in sexual crimes in the downtown. And that anyway. women-led businesses are closing down. Our council is... is- it's a, the majority of women. women. Let's go. Let's go, ladies. Let's lift each other up. Let's focus in. Maybe it's maybe it's kind of been missed because it's a busy time. Um, but now, hopefully, uh, council is aware and these women-led businesses can get the support that they rightfully deserve. I mean, come on. I mean, speaking yeah. of support, if I may, and my we middle were, we this were week. We're very in favor of balconies. And that's great that they built yeah. more balconies and they did that. But I mean, in the meantime, all your other things that you've been spending so much time on as a council... You've neglected some of the key things about yeah. things like safety. Hello, safety. this is something that is your role. Cleanliness, safety, security, mm-hmm. uh, potholes. I, I potholes. dipped through three potholes on my way down my street, and then they're telling me I'm going to pay more to park in the spot I already paid for. There's a lot to unpack there. No shortage of things to talk about. And this uh, this week's middle uh, is, again, mm-hmm. I go back to my seniors, and certainly during yes. uh, this heat wave, we're going to find out, and, and I already see the messaging from the uh, provincial health officer and the, and the government yeah. and just, you know, checking in on a friend and that. And I get that. Hydrate, yeah, yeah. hydrate Good. before 100%. you're thirsty. I, I, I get that. Call 911 if you're in distress. That's great that EMS is is getting some mm-hmm. some bolstered support and what have you. But we we are at that point now that we have to help our seniors and really no delay, no red tape, make it happen. Bylaws and stratas and rental buildings that don't allow a window box air conditioner, even at your own expense, that should go the way of the dodo bird. I write about yeah. it at the orchid.ca. I saw that. I don't agree. I don't agree with you on that. I think there's different ways you can air condition without putting them in the window. And I, I, I don't think we're at the level of numbers of days of a year that you can justify people putting these hideous just, contraptions in but windows. You can put them in just for those days of the year. No, they won't take them out though. There's we have an inside one that pokes out a little bit in the window. I I, I think I agree, and, I, and there's no bylaw against that. But I hear what you're saying. It's a, it, the world. It, there's this a dichotomy of climate change and bylaw and rules change, and it feel I think governmental you know politicians feel guilty about making decisions that relate to dealing. We do it a lot with water actually in, in st- structures and assuming there's going to be floods because of the of the future of our climate. But we don't talk a lot about our inside our homes and the heat and the air conditioning. And, and so you're right on that point. I think there needs to be a discussion about this. And certainly from a development point of view, a, a, a sadly, uh, a requirement that buildings be. And, and I talked to a guy when I was filling in for, for Mike Smith on you know, about development and design of buildings. And the Olympic Village being an example where they have, it's not air conditioning, but they have a system of, of coolants, ventilation. Yeah, cooling ventilation. ventilation through, oh, yeah. Through, yeah. Through, so, but of course, this and and you know, air conditioning is very expensive, and it takes uses of a lot. I don't energy. have it. So, therefore, I've got that? this humidity hair. I look like Elaine Bennis in Seinfeld, man. I'm just sitting here watching my hair <laughs> get bigger by the second. Hey, no, at man, George underscore Affleck on Twitter at Jody with a Y Vance. Also on Twitter, when you go to the Orca.ca, hit the fin, put your email in it because you want to be updated every every weekday with the uh, the musings and the links that you must read compliments of McLean K, our editor-in-chief. Yes. Say guy goodbye, took a George. Guy took a vacation. Can you believe it? Oh, my God. Oh, McLean, what a lazy guy. Come on, McLean. Bye. Bye. Bye.